Bonjour. Hi. Je m'appelle Benoît Claire. My name is Benoît Claire. I'm head of publishing at Nacon. It's an honor and a privilege to open our first digital conference, Nacon Connect. For our games and peripherals, the last two years have been highly eventful for Nacon. Talented studios and high-profile partners have joined us in our big project, which can be summarized with a single word, passion. Each of our teams is composed of passionate people, specialists of a particular genre, sport or technology. Like you, they are fans of motor racing, role-playing, adventure games and simulations. They dream of rugby, tennis, cycling. They are addicted to deck builders and roguelikes. Like you, they want peripherals, headsets, keyboards, mice and controllers that always meet or exceed expectations. And every day, they work hard to give passionate gamers like you what they want. Over the last few months, they have prepared a number of surprises for you. So, without further ado, I'm proud and delighted to leave you in the hands of some of our talented people who will be introducing you to the future of Nacon. Friends and subjects, thank you all for coming. We are gathered here to celebrate the unification of Boston and Hartford. One new domain, strong, safe, and united in upholding the masquerade. Tonight, we rewrite the story of the Boston Camarilla. Tonight, we revolutionize our blood supply. A new era is upon us. Raise your glasses with me. Out with the old, in with the new. Let the party begin. Hello, my name is Ilya Tipo, and I'm a quest designer at Big Bad Wolf Studio. We're currently working on Vampire the Masquerade, Swanson. At Big Bad Wolf, we specialize in story-driven RPGs. Story-driven because we want to tell a story, an RPG because we want to give players as much freedom as possible to roleplay, like in pen and paper role-playing games. It's the perfect combination for adapting a franchise like Vampire the Masquerade into a video game. The world of Vampire the Masquerade is basically like ours, but with vampires. There are smartphones, electric cars, and all other familiar items, but vampires walk among us. The only thing is that they are outnumbered by humans and so must remain hidden. This is what we call the masquerade. The only rule that vampires must comply with and that the Camarilla, the largest vampire sect, tries to enforce. It's the 21st century, a very challenging and dark time for vampires. The elders have left and London has fallen. Against this difficulty and uncertain backdrop, a new prince emerges to take charge of the Camarilla in Boston. The shootout you saw in the trailer is the start of the game. It's the event that triggers all the twists and turns that you'll face as a player and try to influence. Who ordered the attack? Why was it ordered? These are the type of questions you need to find answers to in Swanson. Vampires are undead, so they have no pulse or vital signs. The closer they come into physical and emotional contact with humans, the more dangerous it is for them. And of course, that's where we will take you. You won't play as a single character, but rather three different characters. Three different vampires from three different clans, with different powers and different views on the plot, the world and the Camarilla. It's also a chance to make them interesting as characters. Each of them has a separate backstory in past that is as interesting to explore as the mainline story unfolding in the present. So it's your task to lead the investigation and find out who is behind the attack, who is after the Camarilla and why. 
Your first task is to complete your character sheet. For each of your three characters, you can allocate attributes and different skills. We have things like persuasion and psychological attributes that can help you influence people and unlock dialogue, options, choices, etc. They are also associated with skills that are useful in the world around you. You can pick locks, hack terminals and other skills that have practical use while exploring the world. The intent behind the choices we give you is to put you in a difficult situation where nothing is black and white, everything's a shade of grey. You might have two options, but not want to choose either of them. You play as monsters, and you'll feel that in all aspects of the game, at all moments in the storyline. There are obviously multiple endings based on the choices you make in the game's different quests. We really hope you become engrossed in this rather unique game concept, in which we're trying to push the limits of what you can do with interactive storytelling. We're trying to expand the number of choices and variety of situations as much as possible. We can't wait for you to find out more about it. We can't wait for you to play it, and we're really looking forward to hearing your feedback. Hi, I'm Marco Ponte, CEO of RaceWard Studio. In September 2019, we joined the Nacon family. And soon after, we started putting all our passion into developing a game set in the world of motorcycle racing. This game is unique in its genre and uses innovative technology in terms of simulation. Kiloton provided the engine we're using to develop this title, which helped us get up and running immediately and make our extensive experience in this field available to the whole group. Most of our developers have a lot of experience creating this type of game. And they ride motorbikes in real life, which I think is very important when making games like this. Because being able to recreate and implement the same feelings as riding a bike in the real world is extremely important. RIMS Racing is a completely new approach to the motorcycle simulation game experience. In our game, you can use the top-of-the-line bikes from the biggest manufacturers in your quest to harness their power. Our game provides an extremely accurate riding experience and precise control of the bike. We think it is hugely important for fans of the genre. But we also wanted to give beginners the chance to enjoy this type of game. So we also came up with an easier mode that helps new players discover the world of motorcycle racing. Our goal is to provide a high level of quality, especially in terms of recreating all the bike's details and how they behave in races. Players can enjoy many kilometers of asphalt on famous and iconic roads for motorcyclists and on real circuits, where you can experience the passion and thrill of overtaking at breakneck speeds or closing the throttle before a particularly tricky bend. One of the unique features of our game is the ability to monitor the status of the bike in real time. And, of course, it will also be possible to compete online or pursue a long career in which you can show the world your riding prowess and team management credentials come pilota e anche come gestione di un team. One of our priorities is to give players the chance to modify and manage the mechanical aspect of the bike. This obviously helps to provide better realism and more customization options for your bike. Players will need to demonstrate that they are true riders, keeping in mind that knowing how to ride is not the only requirement. Rest assured, we're working very hard to ensure that RIMS Racing sets a new standard for this type of game. So, if you love games like this, stay tuned, because you'll experience something you've never experienced before.
Many moons ago, mortals rose up against me and chased me down. They were led by demon hunters, wretched beings incapable of seeing the beauty of a corrupted world. My creatures and demons gave everything they had in the fight, but it was not enough. I was forced to leave the world of the living. Weakened, I returned to hell to survive. For years I consumed fresh souls to regain my power, but their numbers are fast diminishing. I cannot wait anymore. I must reclaim my rightful place. It is time to gather my forces once more. Those who signed a pact with me will do as I order. They will spread terror and corruption in my name. The time has come for my revenge. Je suis Camille Lisoire, I'm je Camille Lisoire, and I'm the art director on Rogue Lords. We chose to place Rogue Lords in a world similar to New England in the 17th century, at the time of the Salem Witch Trials. In Rogue Lords, you play as the devil who was returned on Earth after several years following his defeat to Van Helsing, his sworn enemy. He calls on the services of well-known evil disciples such as uh, Dracula and Bloody Mary. His disciples are reminded of the pact they signed with him earlier, so they have no choice but to work together as a team to fight the devil's enemies. As you play on the side of evil, you obviously fight the forces of good. The forces of good are mainly demon hunters, but not all. There's also Sanctualumen, a mysterious organization you will encounter that seems to cause you a lot of trouble. It's a co-production with Laker, another studio from the Paris region. We created the prototype of the game with them a few years ago, so it was an obvious choice to continue developing the game with them. And when Sai and I joined the Nacon fold, we could finally start production on the game we had dreamed about for several years. We wanted the game to be quite dark and mature, so we set out to explore gothic fantasy, and obviously the first influence we turned to was Tim Burton and all of his work especially the film Sleepy Hollow, which takes place in the same time period. You can even find the Headless Horseman in our game. Rogue Lords is a roguelike. You do a series of runs to gain experience and acquire tools that will help you in achieving your final goal. Fights are very important in the game. It's turn-based combat, like in many roguelikes. In these fights, you control a team of three characters chosen from among the Devil's Disciples who each have a set of skills you can also choose. For example, Bloody Mary can place a mirror behind her enemies and each time she deals damage, the damage is reflected to the enemy with the mirror behind them, so she can be extremely effective. You can also create combos between the different characters in your team. You explore a procedurally generated 3D map. You must search for different diabolical artifacts that the devil lost during the Great War against Van Helsing. Each artifact corresponds to a different run. These runs can be played until you have enough experience, so the game has infinite potential. An important aspect of the Rogue Lords is that because you play as the devil, you can cheat. So there really aren't any rules to the game. Uh, you can pause the game at any time. For example, during combat, when your disciples are in a bad way and close to death, the devil can take damage in their place. We really wanted to give Rogue Lords a dark and poetic atmosphere. And we hope that players have as much fun exploring this world as we did making it. Bonjour. Hi, I'm Yannick Allard, director of Nacon Peripherals, and I want to talk to you today about the future of Nacon. For several years now, our team of designers, engineers and project managers has been developing gaming peripherals for all the different consoles on the market and for PC. We gained considerable expertise developing peripherals at Big Ben, and six years ago we decided to create the Nacon brand. We operate all over the world, Europe, Asia, Japan, so we are an 
international brand, and we are continuing to develop our player community. We also have been lucky enough to partner with Sony, which has enabled us to develop officially licensed products, including controllers, such as the Revolution line of controllers, which has raised the profile of our brand throughout the world. A few months ago, we were delighted and proud to welcome Rig to the Nacon Fold. RIG is a brand with a global reputation. Our different areas of expertise complement each other nicely. This acquisition will allow us to design and develop gaming accessories that will help you give your players an even more immersive gaming experience. We are facing new challenges. Today's players want to play everywhere. Cloud gaming is making this possible. The arrival of 5G means players can truly play anywhere. And we will support gamers by developing products designed for this new way of playing. We are already in discussions with lots of telecom operators, including Orange in France, to help them develop products for your smartphones. This year is an important year for us, because we have welcomed RIG to the NACON team. But I am also delighted and proud to announce that we have entered into a partnership with Microsoft. With this new Microsoft partnership we can develop new peripherals for PC, Xbox One consoles and the next console generation. The future is indeed bright for NACON, and we can't wait to show you our new products in the coming Heureux, très impatient de pouvoir vous présenter ces nouveaux produits dans les mois qui vont arriver. Hi, my name is Jeanne Rousseau. I'm the co-founder and president of Spiders. We're very proud to introduce you to our new baby, the game Steel Rising. For our latest game, Steel Rising, we created a new and original universe especially for the game, and a very much more action-focused approach than the gameplay found in our previous titles. In Steel Rising, you play as Aegis, an automaton in female form, a masterpiece that serves as a bodyguard to Queen Marie Antoinette. And Queen Marie Antoinette has ordered us to seek out our creator to put an end to the massacres carried out by the robot army of King Louis XVI, who seems to have gone mad while trying to suppress the nascent revolution by unleashing an army of out-of-control robots. So your mission is to try to stop all of that. In this version of Paris, you find well-known monuments and others that don't exist anymore. We recreated the Grand Châtelet, for example, and the Tour du Temple, the kind of places that characterize the period. When we envisaged Steel Rising, our basic premise was, what would have happened if Louis XVI had been a tyrant and could indulge his passions for machines and automatons to crack down on the revolution in its early stages? 
We wanted to add more verticality to exploration, so when you move around the Parisian streets, you don't just stay at ground level. And to move from fight to fight, we really wanted to exploit other types of movement. Climb up on a balcony, discover a secret passage to another location, that kind of thing. To avoid the harsh transitions found in many games when you're exploring, when you're like, oh, a fight, it's a sudden change of pace and a type of game, we wanted everything to be tied together more fluidly. Aegis has weapons integrated into her body because she's a robot, so it's pretty handy. With each item you find while exploring, you can choose to make her more powerful, more mobile or more durable. We've created more than seven weapons, which are actually families of weapons. Because you can find many more as you progress through the game, and each one has its own unique characteristics. The weapons range from ones on your arms for very light combat, to alchemical rifles for long-range attacks, and uh, much heavier weapons you can use to flatten your enemies with maximum force. I think many players will start off thinking, okay, I'll fight, take on these monsters, and find the best strategy. And what I hope, if I've done my job properly, is that they will end up getting immersed in this world. And they will want to explore more than just the strategic and tactical path to accomplish the main storyline. We put a lot of effort into creating lots of side quests that enhance the world. So you can also find unique gear and items that tie into these quests. It's a world we've tried to make as deep and varied as possible. Hi, I'm Alain Jarnieu, creative director at KC Racing. We've been working on a project for several months now, and I think it's something many have been eagerly awaiting for a long time. So I'm proud to be introducing it to you. Let's take a look. I'm delighted to announce a new game in the Test Drive Unlimited series, Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. You may recall that the Solar Crown is the name of the competition we had in the previous Test Drive Unlimited game. We wanted to reuse this name and the championship's concept, which is not a close championship where the player is restricted to doing certain things. We wanted to give players a variety of things to do and the freedom to progress through the game however they want. So we developed a new test drive unlimited concept by keeping the DNA of the game, but also evolving the gameplay in game modes to make them more modern and more in line with current trends and what today's players find fun. I know the Test Drive Unlimited franchise really well because I worked on the first TDU, Test Drive Unlimited 1. I also worked on Test Drive Unlimited 2. And uh, we wanted to relaunch this great franchise because there is no real equivalent at the moment. 
It's a game that players really love, a game made for fans that is making a comeback today thanks to KT Racing and Nacon. This new test drive unlimited game is benefiting from all of KT Racing's expertise in motor racing. This includes the physics engine used to drive the car, derived from our experience creating the entire WRC series, which helped us develop an engine that can reproduce very diverse driving conditions whether it's gravel, asphalt, etc. And that's an essential asset. When I play Test Drive Unlimited, I obviously want to buy a Ferrari, Lamborghini or Bugatti. So it's a unique world in terms of the cars you can buy. And also in terms of your avatar, for which you have lots of customization options, like luxury clothes and accessories. To add more realism to Test Drive Unlimited, we created an island at a one-for-one -one scale, which is important for authenticity and the game experience. I like to go to places that exist in the game world, so everything you can see, you can visit. My goal is to indulge my passion for cars with the car fan community at full throttle. When does Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown release? I can't give you a precise date right now because we want to spend time perfecting the game, improving the technology and game experience and listening to the fan community after the game's announcement, so we can make Test Drive Unlimited as great as possible. I'm really happy to have unveiled Test Drive Unlimited Solar Crown. The team is having a great time with this game. I am extremely proud to be able to create a new game for this amazing franchise, and I hope I can share more about it with you very soon. Hi, I'm Jean-Michel Villain, Creative Director and CEO of Abercam Studio, and today I'm pleased to introduce to you the game Roguebook. It's a roguelike deck builder. When you start the game, you choose two heroes from a selection of four. So you have a hero combination, a starter card deck, and as you progress through the game world encountering and fighting enemies, you craft more and more cards as in-deck building games to gradually improve your deck. It's a roguelike, so you can lose one hero. But if you lose two, you have to start the game from the beginning. All content is procedurally generated, so you can't make the same choice twice because the content changes from one run to the next. There's also an aspect to the game that we call the overworld. It's a map you walk around in and explore the world, which has been spawned by the rogue book. In this layer, you can find bonus artifacts and treasure and also encounter enemies, win battles, fight bosses, etc. Find gems and customize your deck based on the enemies you defeat. Once you've finished the game the first time on the basic difficulty level, you'll see that there are things that you can unlock to help you advance to the next difficulty level. The difficulty increases, but the player also has more options, which means more combinations are possible, and it never gets boring. All the game's action takes place in the Rogue Book, which is actually the lore book of our first game, Feria. So it's a type of compendium that includes all the legends and stories of the universe of Feria, which is a huge world. If adventurers open the book, they are sucked inside and become trapped. As for the game's heroes, we chose four of the most popular heroes from Feria, which were characters that we put the most effort into when developing Feria. There's Shara, who is quite a badass adventurer. Soroko, who is an ogre triton. Cypher, the rat demon and Aurora, the turtle. I'd say our approach was to revisit Feria with Miyazaki's approach to make something with more animism, where everything ultimately has a soul, which creates a universe full of spirits that are somewhat enigmatic. We also wanted to take Rogue Book to another level. For this, we collaborated with a legend in the card game world. He is co-designer on the project, and he has a game mechanic he wants to explain to you. So I'll hand you over to him. Hi, I'm Richard Garfield. 
I'm best known as the designer of Magic the Gathering, which is the world's first trading card game. And, uh, since then, I've designed a lot of other games and studied a lot of games and uh, co-authored a book called The Characteristics of Games. My involvement with Roguebook began with being a fan of Feria. Feria is a digital card game, and it really used to board in a, a unique way that uh, I found very appealing. In fact, I had to quit the game because I was spending too much time on it, and there's not too many games I can say that about. When the Abracam team decided they were interested in doing a deck builder, we talked. Uh, I really love deck builders, and, uh, and, and so we decided that there was a, a good opportunity there for a partnership, and that's how I became a co-designer for Roguebook. One of my favorite innovations with Roguebook is the fat deck system. Uh, the fat deck system began when I shared with the team my interest in a deck builder, which at the high end was not so involved with getting rid of cards from your deck. Uh, most deck builders, uh, this is an important part of the strategy. It's uh, you add add some cards, but then you spend a lot of time getting rid of cards. And getting rid of cards is not as much fun as adding them. Getting rid of cards often gets rid of uh, cards which are interesting, but don't really fit with your deck, and uh, also makes the deck more consistent. I wanted to see a game where it was uh, possible to pursue a strategy which was much more about getting a big deck, which was a little less predictable, but uh, uh, a lot of fun. We went about that by making it so that you get rewarded by getting certain thresholds of cards in your deck. Uh, this is done through having a skill tree for each of your characters, and when you get up to a certain number of cards, you get to choose a skill for your character. That way, you get a really custom experience with your deck in several different ways. Well, I think it'll uh, bring an entirely new type of deck building possibility to players. Uh, they can pursue building a large deck rather than just the lean, mean fighting machine, which is uh, so important in most deck builders. Uh, personally, I like to build decks that uh, are a little less predictable, where you have to think a little bit more on your feet, and that's what the big deck is all about. Uh, so so this will give uh, more options for people in uh, how they uh, engage with the game. Well, I hope you all enjoy playing Roguebook as much as we've enjoyed putting it together. 